it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. So before we jump in, hopefully you guys are all taking advantage of the holiday gift, which allows you to book appointments in October, November, December, and January so we can look over all of the good stuff that's coming. Like this month, we've got a Venus going retrograde. We've got the North Node getting ready to move. We've got Jupiter getting ready to move. We've got another retrograde coming up. So lots and lots to talk about. So take advantage of getting a cool little holiday appointment at a discount rate, okay? Click in the description box down below and you can take advantage. Now this month, Aries, I just wanna put it out there like this. The mask has got to come off. The mask comes down by exposure, by showing us who you are through vulnerability and intimacy, you have the opportunity to change your world and to show up completely differently. It is absolutely magnificent this month, and I'll talk more about that. But first and foremost, what we've got going on this month, the big ticket item, is that we've got Venus going retrograde. Now, Venus retrograde in general is going to have us relooking our over our relationships, our values, my self-esteem, um, finances are definitely going to be a thing. And I don't ever want to dismiss that a Venus retrograde also will have us relooking at our skills and our talents. Maybe we've had a skill and a talent that we haven't really been putting into service and to use. And during this retrograde, we can start to see the value of it a little bit more, which encourages us and empowers us to bring it out, right? But Venus is also going to really take a look at how you're showing up, right? Are you getting up? Are you getting out of bed, Aries? Are you putting yourself together? Because don't forget, Venus is the, the planet of beauty as well. So how are you showing up? How are you putting yourself together when you go out in the world? I do think that that is a question to consider as we continue to move through the Venus retrograde. Now, Venus retrograde this month is going to be starting in Scorpio. So for you, moving backwards through the eighth house. And in a retrograde, we're looking back, right? We're retro, we're going to the past. So we're gonna re-look over all of these things in the eighth house, intimacy, sex, trust, debt, other people's money. But most of all, what I like to wrap the eighth house into is intimacy because it means you see into me. This is the scariest, most vulnerable, most delicious pieces of you. And when we're talking about the scariest, deepest, darkest pieces of you, it's not always trauma and drama. It can be. For sure, you may be re-looking at a drama or a trauma this month. You could be. But sometimes what we keep down there, the scariest thing we've got going for us are the things that we do well. Right, the talents, the skills that I have, the love and the vulnerability, right? Maybe somebody has taught me some idea from when I was younger and I see as an adult it has no place to fit in my relationships anymore and I don't know what to do so I need to grow, I need to expand, I need to be vulnerable, I need to let people see me and know me. In intimacy, people get to know us because intimacy means you see into me. So have no doubt that this beautiful, sensual, warm Venetian energy is going to take you back to take a look at some of these things and how you can open them and pull that mask down and let us see you a little bit more definitely this month and through the rest of the retrograde really, okay? But let's jump in and break this month down by day because ain't nobody got time to be here all day. This is YouTube, right? <laughs> Okay, so at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, this is one I think is important to not skim over. We've got Mercury who's over in Libra, occupying your 7th house, who's going to come into a square with Pluto who's in Capricorn. I think this is important to understand because to me it is the setup for the month. You are going to look more maturely at the relationships, the structure of relationships, the organization, the purpose of relationships in your life, right? A square puts us under pressure and we don't like being squished down like this. So we're going to take an action to get out of the square. We will take an action to get out of that box. So trust me, whether it be relationships around your career, because you definitely have been trying to figure out what you're going to be when you grow up next, right? So you could definitely be needing to find new relationships that help advance your career because you find out, hey, the way I've been doing things is not helping me achieve my soul level calling or move into that next job position. Or if you're retired, move in a direction that makes my heart feel free, that makes me feel purposeful, like I'm achieving something. This could also just be that you are taking a much more mature look at relationships in your life to see which ones do and do not belong there. I mean, think about TV, you guys. There are not the same characters 
every season, right? Sometimes somebody's got to go, somebody's got to come in, so it changes the game a little bit. That's what I think the setup of the month ultimately is with this mask coming off. Okay, on the 6th, we've got Venus taking that retrograde into the sign of Scorpio here. And Scorpio is the most private place that you have. It's so deep. It's so intimate. So Venus will be bringing things to the surface. Venus retrograde is also absolutely phenomenal for bringing back ex-lovers or ideas of ex-lovers or romance. And Aries, I really want to stress to you that I feel like this Venus retrograde is giving you a big old opportunity and a big old space of safety to let go of that lost love. Let go of that old love. You cannot build a new life on something that has looked the same way for a hundred years. But if you've got something new in your world or you've got a vision of something new in your world around relationships, which you get a new, new moon this month to help you make that vision, you can start fresh if you see what wasn't working, what you can't take with you. So it's going to be in Scorpio here until the end of the month, and then it's going to track back up to Libra. But right here, give yourself some permission to, to take some private time and to think about your values around this eighth house issue. Now, a Venus retrograde could, could potentially also dry up a partner's money or affect a partner's money because it is in the eighth house. So these are things that you just want to consider. But I would tell you, relook over your budget, relook over your finances. Venus likes money, she's about money, the eighth house does have money context, so pay attention to that budget as well, okay? Now, like I said, you get a new moon this month and you've got it happening in Libra. So a new moon means the sun and moon are in conjunction, they're holding hands, anything's possible, fresh starts. So this is when we're gonna plant those seeds of intention in your seventh house. What are these new relationships? What are the new networking relationships you need? What's the new relationship of you with you that you're trying to bring out to the surface, right? I told you, take that mask off, but it's kind of scary to walk out without the mask a little bit, right? But you take off your mask, right? And somebody else becomes willing to take off theirs as well and we get a way different experience. This is in business, this is in romance, this is whatever. So pick your setup for your new relationships. Some of us need some new relationships to roll on in here so that we can achieve the next thing we need to, our new cast of characters, right? So this is a beautiful energy. Now the other thing I think of with Libra at this new moon, and I would pose this question to you, Aries, is, Libra is about balance. It's about harmony. Where do you feel unbalanced, right? Where do you need to have a new start so that you have your solid equilibrium in your life? You know, do you have a bunch of friends who are so fun, but you don't have a whole bunch of friends over here or, you know, a strong mentor in your corner to help you go the distance, right? Look at where that equilibrium may not be balanced, okay? All right, on the 10th, we've got Mercury entering into Scorpio. Scorpio is, first of all, um, a busy house this month, so there's going to be a lot happening, a lot of focus on your 8th house stuff, which again is a financial house, but it's also an intimate house as well. Mercury moves into Scorpio and is savvy. This is a great time to be looking over money, especially with that Venus retrograde there. Relook over conversations you can have. Mercury is not retrograde, so you could be having some sexy conversation, like literally, it's, this is the 8th house. You could be having sexy conversation. You could be having conversations where you're talking about vulnerability, intimacy, you're showing yourself, you're bringing yourself to the surface, you're thinking about things. This is your thinking, your decision making, your communication skills. Mercury is also very savvy in business. So use this energy to your advantage, okay? When we get to the 11th, this is another relationship setup that caught my eye for the month, okay? We've got Mercury who's, or excuse me, we've got Venus who's retrograde and in Scorpio coming into a square with Mars who is in Aquarius. So this is your eighth house, your intimacy house, taking on your friendship house, your social house, right? And again, that square says, I gotta make a decision to get out of here. So one of the honesties you may be coming to this month, Aries, is do you need to upgrade your technology, <laughs> right? Do you need to upgrade your social situation? Do you need a new tribe, right? What do you need to look at and take an action to bring um, the crisis to an end between these two areas. Do you have you had that deep gnawing in your gut that you just don't belong with this organization anymore? Maybe you really do not, but it would be a scary prospect to have to jump out there on faith and see what's next, right? It might be time. So look at this. Is it time to let go of some friends? Whatever it is, the people, places, and things that you're not in alignment with, this square is going to create a little crisis so that you'll get out of it, okay? 
On the 23rd, the sun enters Scorpio again. See, Scorpio's up there rocking, okay? <laughs> They are rock 'em sock 'em up there. So Scorpio, you've got light, heat, life, vitality. You're gonna want to shine in this eighth house. So this is how I know that even with a retrograde up there, and you're pulling the mask down, exposing yourself, letting us see you, you want to shine here. Aries, whatever it is that has tapped this deep piece of you, I don't think you're fighting it at this time. I think that you are ready to move forward nice and slowly, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Scorpio is a fixed energy. You're not out there winning the race, but I think you're willing to do that. Now on the 24th, we've got a full moon in Taurus, which first of all, the full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. And the first adjustment I would ask you to check in on at this full moon is how grounded you are. Taurus is a grounding energy. Where do you feel ungrounded? Where do you feel like you need to be connected to the earth a little bit more or be centered? Please take a look at that. That's a genuine question for you, Aries, because sometimes you guys, you know, you're a fire energy, right? So where do you need to reground? The other thing I think of is because this is sit sitting in your second house do your finances need to be grounded do you need to have is there a shift or a change that needs to come to your finances with the second house it doesn't always happen but I do caution against it a full moon in the second house can dry up finances for four weeks it certainly can now that's not always a bad thing because sometimes it just means that a project is coming to an end right that's done it's time to move on to something else but it can dry up your finances so I would tell you pay attention to your finances this month Aries as well pay attention to it because it has value and you want to make sure you don't have any delusions about what's going on okay this Venus retrograde she is still an energy of money so she will be helpful to you I promise okay all right when we come to the um, 31st we've got a couple cool things happening first of all Mercury is going to jump into Sagittarius which creates an abundance of open-mindedness okay Mercury is already a mental planet but he's a little bit more about the details of things Sagittarius is like pfft, on the details we don't need those let's just make it happen <laughs> so this is an extremely wonderful opportunity to be very open-minded not to be so caught up in the details but you know let yourself expand let your mind expand a little bit this is happening in your ninth house this is the house of faith yeah maybe it looks way different than you thought it would yeah maybe being vulnerable you're finding out is actually working in your favor because it attracts the right kind of energies to you this could also be an energy of study, of education, of travel, of publishing, broadcasting, marketing. Mercury is savvy. Sagittarius is optimistic and willing to expand. Use this energy to your favor, okay? Also on the 31st, we have got Venus continuing her retrograde, but she's going to track that thing up into Libra. So she's going to back up out of Scorpio, back up into Libra. Now Venus retrograde in Libra, which is a sign she naturally rules, has you first of all looking at the seventh house. So relationships, conscious chosen relationships. You have consciously chosen these relationships that are in your life. And that includes the relationship of you with you. Your ego's decided you're a something. So you're living that way. Maybe that's changed. Now with Venus retrograde here, first of all, what I think it does is it helps you be a little bit kinder to people. You've been taking down the mask. There's a little bit more vulnerability for you this month. And I do feel like you are kinder with other people. For some reason, you're like, I don't know. All right, I can see that. Right there's a, There is that more open-minded quality and more balanced and fair, just quality that's coming with it. But the other part about it is that I think in the seventh house, Venus retrograde helps you to be diplomatic and to compromise in ways that you maybe wouldn't have before, right? It's a very good energy because it's helping you relook over these relationships. It really is. What's the value of this relationship? Um, financially, is there an investment with this relationship? Now, like I said, Venus retrograde is absolutely infamous for bringing back these past loves or thoughts about them. So you could actually have a romantic partner or an idea or a conversation of that coming back up for sure. So just kind of keep that in mind. This could also, ooh, it just hit me. This just hit me. So pay attention. Somebody needs this. This could bring back a debt. For some reason, this could be a debt, and maybe you owe a debt to a person, a specific person. It could bring it back up, and it's time for you to move into setting that correct. Ooh, somebody needs that. If that was you, keep me posted in the description box down below because somebody needed to hear that. That's very exciting when that happens. 
All right, guys, I think it's gonna be a good month. I think it's gonna be a month where um, not everything's moving forward. Like I said, it's super speed or anything like that, but we are moving forward, so enjoy it. Take advantage of this month. You know, if you've got a weak relationship in your life, if you've got a weak budget, if you've got any of those things, you're gonna see it over this next month and some change over the next six weeks with Venus retrograde. and. The good budgets are going to stick. The good relationships are going to stick. The ones that you're willing to work on are going to stick and improve. And the ones that you're not willing to work on, they're going to fall off. And that's good news. It is fall. That is a gift to us from the universe to have fall so we can have the leaves and branches that no longer are in alignment fall away from us. So enjoy this month. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Ooh, please tell me what you think of my new background and the new camera. I'm trying to come up for us a little bit. <laughs> so let me know what you think in the um, description box down below or in the comment section down below. In the description box down below, take advantage of the holiday seal and I will see you beautiful friends next month. Bye.